Yo, what's up, guys? Welcome to the second episode of Producer Spill. Today, I'm here with... Yo, what's good? Is it Zare? So, what's up, Zare? How you feeling today? Good, man. Good, man. Uh, just on a trip right now in New Jersey, but I had to make it for my boy, Genie, you know? Let's get straight to it. Um, So, what are some of your credits? I've worked with a lot of Florida artists. Boston Richie, Lil Tyler, uh, Lil Shimmy, Chaplin Pat, Kodak. Kodak? I, I didn't know you had one with Kodak. I've seen, I've seen some of the other ones you had up, but... I didn't know you had one with Kodak. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't put it on my page, but he he previewed it actually on his Instagram live. But I, I didn't put it on my page yet because I just I want the song to drop. I, I seen that studio vlog. Um, it was Wiz, Woodboy G, and Boston Richie. That was the one they recorded Chosen One at, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I watched that uh, studio vlog, and then like and then like two weeks later, it came out, and I was like, damn, I this sounds so familiar. Yeah, bro. A bunch of people were sending me that. Somebody actually told me the next day after that session that that had happened because somebody recognized my tag in the studio and then they're like yo you got a, you got a song with Wiz, Richie, and Woodboy I was like oh but I didn't think it was gonna come out though because like usually artists collab artists collab a lot of times and they never put it out so this one like kind of caught me by surprise when they just started really making beats in 2020 but I made beats on GarageBand in 2019. Like in the summer of 2019, I was making beats on GarageBand on my phone. And then I moved to FL Studio in the beginning of the year. But it was hard at first because I almost wanted to quit the first month of starting it because I couldn't understand nothing, bro. I watched YouTube videos. It was so like self-explanatory, but I still couldn't understand it. Cause like you got, with me, I gotta, I gotta kind of just get a feel. Damn near the exact same way I started. Like I started, on GarageBand on my phone, just like putting down them little drum sounds, and then, really? um, and then I got FL Studio in 2020, and um, and then yeah, like just from there during quarantine while COVID was happening, I just sit inside my house all day, mess around with FL Studio, mm -hmm. kind of learn about it, go on YouTube, start doing tight beats, all that type of stuff. What um, what what inspired you to start producing? Um, it's crazy because I I was like really heavily into like lo-fi beats. I was like, I liked them so much that I tried to remake them on my phone on GarageBand. And then I was sending them, I was actually sending them out, like not to artists, but like people that do music. They would just give me their honest opinion. Like, yo, this, this is kind of good, but you know, it could be better, you know? And I was like, oh, wow, that surprised me. Cause like, I would ask them like, you know, rate the, rate the beat one to 10. Like it'd always be like sevens, eights, Sometimes nine, I was like, okay, so I can actually do this. You know, all, all, I, all I needed was just like another ear. And then I was just locked in after that and upgraded the equipment. So I got a laptop, MSI laptop. That was my first laptop. And then went from there. Yeah, I, I, I kind of do the same thing now, even with my friends. Like, even though like, I've been doing it for a while, it's still nice for like, if you make like a super unique type beat, like, where you want someone to hear it, like just the beat by itself, not even an artist on it. I still send it out to my friends and be like, yo, what do you think? Yo, I just made this right now. What do you think? Yeah, exactly. The input is good, man. Cause like your, your, your friends for real, they're going to tell you what it really is. You know, that's what happened to me. And that's how I always got better. Like they critique it. And I was going to ask you, what, what was your first placement that you remember getting? And like, what what's considered like a placement? Like, are they like streaming good or are they like it's okay a placement's like considered because i know people have different definitions okay wait, okay so. placements like your first song that you produced whether it's like someone with like one follower it just got released on streaming platforms oh wow that it was probably my my old homeboy from high school this was like right when i switched to a laptop his name is big china did a, he did a song that i had like and i was learning how to make beats and i had sent him a couple beats and he's like yo this one's gas I was like, oh, for real? But he's like, yeah, I, I recorded, I recorded to it, and then he sent it to me. I was like, oh, bet. Yeah. And you know, he had he had a few people like you know supporting his music. I ain't gonna lie, it was it was pretty real. I I like the support he was getting. You know, he dropped it on SoundCloud, and I was just I was like, damn. And then he put my name next to the song, like produced by Zare. And I was like, whoa, that's, that's crazy. So this is what happens when you drop a song, like you know, I ain't I ain't know how it goes for real. Yeah. You know, and um, I know I know you're from Miami. The fr the the second time I went no, to no, Miami, Broward, oh, Broward. you're from Broward? Yeah, Broward County. Okay, okay, but when I, when I was in Miami, I was supposed to pull up on you. That, but it sucks though. But um, uh, what so yeah. what's it like? What's it like being a producer from Broward? 
it's kind of a good thing. I, I, yeah, because now, I, you know, I compare, like, situation of different people. Yeah, so I know people, like, in Ohio, uh, Pennsylvania, Minnesota, like, they'll tell me, like, there's nothing out there. Or even in Florida, too, like, I know somebody that lived in Orlando and said there was nothing out there at the time because, you know, it was, like, probably, like, 2021. So, and I noticed, like, all right, there's people buzzing in my area. So I say I'm, I'm in a good situation, you know, happening with upcoming artists in Broward. You know, I also got a, a you know, a spot studio uh, with my dog, Eli, uh, Scape Audio. So like, we always have like artists pull up there and it's a good situation, but you know, you work, you work really hard for things like that. You know, it just doesn't fall on your lap. Do you, are there any like specific producers or artists or like engineers or anything like that that you work with in the area? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, Mighty Made the Beat, Yaya yeah, yeah, Run It Up, um, Dom Too Groovy. Those are like people that are like local. Like, like I can meet him the next day. I met Yaya both times I went to Miami. Super, super stand up guy. I really, I really fuck with him. I almost forgot. Yeah, one way played events. Yeah, yeah, them boys too, you know. And I was gonna ask you, you, you told me a lot of like amazing artists. Um, in your credits, but who are like three that you really want to work with this year? One of them's a bit realistic, one of them's not, but Hot Boy for sure. Earl Sweatshirt, that one's probably not gonna happen this year, but you never know. Yeah. And um, probably Rodway. Rod Rod Rodway's Rodway's a big um a big um opportunity. Like his songs are going up right now. Yeah, and also like his his songs kind of grew on me. And wait, this is a this is a very important question I want to know. If you go mm -hmm. back in time. To when you first started producing and you could sit down with yourself for five minutes and give yourself just like five minutes of advice like from the industry that you know now what would you say to yourself uh i would tell pass there just to keep working and like don't let opportunities pass you you know you, you might not get the same opportunity twice because that definitely did happen i definitely missed a lot of opportunities bro yeah. like that's something not to play with and um don't let people get in your ear you know, don't, don't get discouraged, you know, and take criticism well. Take criticism a lot better because, you know, people that actually want to help you will tell you what you're doing wrong. Like, if you go some, to somebody for advice, they tell you what you're doing wrong, you get upset about it. Like, you can't be mad at it. Like, that person told you what it is. So you just don't take it to the heart, but take it with, like, you know, a good mind like for this year like i know it's the start of the year but um are there any goals you want to accomplish like that are that aren't even producer related just outside of producing outside of music outside of music um yeah for sure uh, i want to actually <laughs> i told i told my people i wanted to start my retirement fund this year um i'm definitely gonna be into buying property um but uh, uh i want to probably get more into stocks that too because you know you don't want to just make have all your money based off of music. At least for me, I wouldn't want that. I would want other assets, you know, just to be more financially free. Um, and for my last question, what's your favorite song that you produced? Wow, dang. Yo, if I say my favorite song, a few are gonna really look at me like, damn. Man, cause I, shoot. Okay, okay, you can do, you can do. Uh, if you give me three, I'll give you three. Okay, yeah, give, give, I can't give, give you. Okay, okay, give me yeah. five, give me five, you can give me five. Give me five? Yeah. All right. Um. And not rank. It doesn't have to be like number one's your favorite, number five's your least favorite. Just say like five songs that you really like that you produce. Last one. Well, it's, the song's called Last One. It's what we're having. Okay. Uh, back flipping with La Tyler. Um, Chosen One with what 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 we're having and Richie and Little Boy. And uh, three, two. Warren. Oh, the Dana Noya with Tyler. I like yeah, that. Yeah, I was, I was, I was, I was, wait, I was waiting for that one. That like that one's one of my favorites. Yeah, too. I'm tripping. I'm tripping. <laughs> oh, that was one of my. Yeah, that that's one of my favorite songs, man. I like, I like Shot Callers with Rico Cartel. Okay. That one. Yeah, I like that one a lot. I, I gotta listen to that one. I, I've only been listening to like yeah. literally fucking Ice T and Dana Noya. Like those are my those are my favorite ones you did. Oh yeah. I think I seen on your Instagram that you were in the studio with Lil Tyler. Like, what what was that like? Do you mostly get your placements? in house like in the studio or do you kind of like network uh, online yeah both um either through sending them or being in the studio but, uh his work ethic is pretty good man like first time i got in the studio with him was at my spot and he he knocked out like two songs in about an hour and 15 minutes it didn't it didn't uh it wasn't 
it looked effortless for him. So I knew he was gonna go, man. Cause I'm sitting here, me and my my my, my dog. He was engineering Tyler, mighty. We, we sitting here looking at him like, what the heck? He's just coming up with these punchlines like they're nothing. Yeah. You know, and it was crazy seeing. I'm like, yeah, he's gonna do something. He's cool, man. He's very cool. Yeah. Good, uh, good, good person for sure. All right. Um. Okay. Those are all the questions I had for you. Um. Do you wanna cook up first, or do you wanna break down iced tea? Uh, whichever one. Uh. Okay. Let's do. Let's let's break down iced tea first. Okay. But all right. This the right beat. I'm trying to leave. She get a gripping on my right knee. It's a lock up on my heart. She got the right key. Okay. But all right. Yeah. So. This is the piano. Uh, so Mighty had this. We made this in the studio, actually. Mighty had made the loop, but it didn't sound like this at first. At first, it was just piano, but I had half timed it and then I had sped it up. And then the second half, I shot it up at a, a, a 12 points up, and that's the 808. Kept it simple, and then the hi hat. You know, when I was making the beat, it was pretty simple. It's like one of those beats that I thought of that weren't really gonna fit the artist. But you know, I, I'm guessing Chris was feeling something else that day. He liked he liked it, and I was like, all right, bet. You know, and I didn't know how he was gonna approach it, but you know, he just started talking about women like the same color as I see. I was like, yeah. that's catchy. And I got the rim. This was it was a great collab because it was really a team collab. So I really liked the song even more because of that. You know, yeah, it, it yeah, was no, well put together. I I like how like it was kind of like not just one person did the loop, like it was like he like Mighty did the loop, but then like you kind of made your little tweaks to it and stuff like that, and like yeah, yeah it, it's really sick. Um, seeing artists hop on like different type of beats, so it's like like Lil Crix usually gets on those like, aggressive type of beats, but like you even heard in the song, uh, she has a, why I switch it up because it's the right beat. Yeah, yeah. exactly. He he said it himself. So yeah. It just it, it made a lot of sense once he, you know, put his uh, twist on it. Because, you know, artists, they're still going to have their twist, even if the beat sounds different. Like. All right, damn, I really appreciate you breaking that down. Let's get into the cook-up now. Yeah, so I like, I got my own mixing te template I like to use. Yeah. So like, by the way, I know people say, like, there's a lot on the master, but see, these two aren't even clicked in. Like, yeah. these aren't even, yeah, I clicked it off. Now I like to make the melodies wide, so I always use a stereo stereo shaper to widen it out. Well, I like that pitch change. Yeah, that's how I usually pitch my melody. I just drag the BPM up. Bro, I'm doing this with no headphones, so <laughs> this might sound crazy, but like I trust my my template. So in cases like this, like you know, I like people that I like loop makers that that stem out their loops like that. So my like I like to just take one one of the one part of the melody and just start it off like that. Mm, let me look for one more thing. If it's in your drum kit, uh, shoot, you know who's it? Oh. No, I, I wish there's one thing 
I wish you did have with some crashes because I'm a big crash. crash dude. Nah, I, I, next, I love, my next drum kit. Next, drum, next drum kit. Oh, for sure, bro. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Not, bro. Don't even trip. You can use another crash. It's not that. Huh? You you could use another crash if you want, like from another kit. Like it just like the main point is just to use like some sounds from the kit. It's like it, this is a producer called Prophet. Oh yeah, I know. Um, I think. He he did a song for Yachty. Yeah, bro. He he, he did one for Yachty bro, and V's, he, right? Uh, he he like produced for like Baby Smooth, V's. Yeah, yeah. Like he's like a big Detroit dude for real. Bro. Thank you, Zara. Thank you for coming on to the to the show, my second episode. Um, it was really sick having you. Like, broke down a lot of your songs. Is there anything last you want to say before you leave? Yeah, man. Hey, uh, Jeannie, appreciate you for having me on here, bro. It's crazy that I'm your second episode. Like, that, it's an honor, bro.